Reggie here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. In this video, we are going to revisit a topic that I have touched on off and on over the years, and it's this idea of whether it is smart to buy green label comics. And the last time that I spoke about this was back in 2020, and as you know, the market looks very different now than it did then. And I will tell you, at the time, a lot of people decided that going with a CGC green qualified label was the right thing to do because those books were a little more affordable than a blue label. The question is, potentially, did it pay off, right? I don't know your specific situation or your specific book, but we are going to look at a couple of examples in this video and maybe the methodology and the thought process that I go through here will be helpful for you to look at your own situation. And maybe you're also now considering whether you should buy green labels. Hopefully this will be helpful for those of you out there that are thinking about doing that. And the very first book that we're going to look at is this one right here. This is Incredible Hulk issue number 181, the first full appearance of Wolverine, one of the most popular books out there. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this one and we're going to start start off by looking at the qualified books, specifically, again, green labels. And we're going to look at a 9.0. While there are not a lot of 9.0s uh, green label on the census, only 34, this one actually does have a recent sale in 2023. So I thought that this would be a good book for us to start with. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and see what kind of data we get. And uh, it takes a little while for these green labels to actually come up and go collect just because I don't know that a whole lot of people are, are pulling this data. So it's having to go to the database to find this information. But fingers crossed that we are going to get some results here. And I am stalling as best I can while we wait for this thing to go through. It is thinking about it. And there we go. All right. So hopefully you all can see that very quick, uh, clearly here on screen. So the first thing that I want to do is to take a look at the one year average of this book, which uh, a year ago was $6,235, $6,235. And I want to compare that to the most recent sale. The most recent sale for this book was $4,920. That is a $1,315 decline over the last year from, from a year ago's average price to the most recent sale, it is $1,350 to the negative, all right? So the other thing that I tried to look at here uh, was looking at the, the previous sale, the last two sales and doing a comparison of those. And you can see here what those two sales were. Uh, the, the sale before the last one was $7,550. And the most recent, as I mentioned, was $4,920. That is a, a decline, a, a sale over sale decline of $2,630. And one of the challenges with green label books, well, there's many challenges. One of the challenges is uh, timely sales data because there are not a lot of these books out there. There are not a lot of transactions, which means that you have gaps in data. So that's part of the reason why I'm trying to look at it two different ways. One, in terms of how is it performed over the last year, and then how have the most recent sales actually gone? So the next thing that I want to do is I want to look at a blue label, a universal blue label 9.0 of the exact same book. And there are 988 of those on the CGC census. Again, all this data comes from Go Collect, uh, which is tied into the CGC database. So let's go ahead and look at how this blue label universal has performed. You can see one year ago, this book was selling for on average $9,138. The most recent sale of an eBay auction was $8,300. That is a net decrease of just $780. Any decrease is, is a bad decrease, but we're only looking at a, a one-year decline of $780. Now, how do the last two sales look, right? The previous sale versus the most recent. You can see the timing here is a little tighter on these in that it's March and April, so pretty close here. But we're looking at $8,415 versus $8,300. That is a decrease of $114. So you're seeing a much smaller decline over the course of a year, but also a smaller decline 
over the last two sales, which again is, I, I think, somewhat important. It gives us some insight into how these books might compare. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go one grade down. I want to go one grade down, and we're going to look at a blue label 8.5. There are more than, slightly more than a thousand uh, copies of this book out there on the census. Uh, so let's look at how this one is performing. The, the one year average for this one is 8135. 8135 is where it was averaging a year ago. And then we can compare that to the most recent sale. I actually had to go to eBay Terapeak to look this one up. And this, the, the sale for this one was 8100. 8100. It was a, a best offer. They offered it up for 8500. It actually went for 8100. So you were looking at from a year ago to the most recent sale, a decline of only $35. That's not a huge decline in this book. So how does it compare? Pre last two sales, they are basically the same. Eighty one hundred dollars was that was the February price versus the uh, the April price. Basically, eighty one hundred, same value for this book. So let's go ahead and let's look and see how a green label. 8.5 is performing. So we only have 56 of those on the census, but you can see there has been some recent sales data for that as of January, 2023. Again, not a whole lot of sales, not a whole lot of them on the census, which is why things look a little different. But let's go ahead and, and see what we see here. That was a lot faster. So thankful uh, for that. So the most recent, the this one year average here, I did not use that because uh, they basically just pulled the most recent sale. So it wasn't a fair comparison to look at the one year decline. So I basically looked at the last two sales and I compared those two things. So this sale that happened in September, which is a while ago, September of 2022, this book actually went for $5,000. They were trying to do a best offer at 8250. The data that I was able to find shows that this book went for $5,000. The most recent sale for this book is $4,049 which is a, a decline of $951. So what's important here is that I am certainly not saying that a um, that a 9.0 blue label is equal to a 9.0 of a green label. That is not what I'm saying because those two things are not necessarily equal. And to be honest with you, I don't know that a 9.0 green label is even even equal to an 8.5 blue label but i had to find some way to do a comparison of blue label to green label and so the question would be of course where well how does a green label translate into a blue label i honestly don't know the answer to that but we could assume that there is going to be at least a a one to one and a half grade difference between a green label and a blue label and so again if, if you find yourself in this situation you can do the analysis and make the comparison and see where it falls but just from looking at this handful Full of examples of of green and blue 9.0s and green and blue 8.5s you can see that the green labels do not perform as well as the blue label they seem to take a a bigger hit than the blue label which kind of makes sense if you take a step back from it and think about it it sort of makes sense uh that that is the case so let's go ahead and take a look at a another example and, and this one is also a an extremely popular book. I actually own a couple of copies of this one. This is Fantastic Four issue number 48, the first appearance of Silver Surfer. It is also a Galactus uh, cameo. So really, really cool book right here. Very much an in-demand book for the last several years. And we're going to do something similar here. We're going to look at green labels and blue labels. And so we are going to start off first uh, by looking at the green label. And you can see here that there are only 134 total uh, copies of this book that are graded green label. Again, not a whole lot of copies of this book out there at all, but let's scroll down and we're going to look at the 5.0. There are 17 copies of that, but again, we have a, a more recent sale for this book. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on that and see what it says. And uh, again, here, they just basically pulled the one year, the 90 day and the 30 day from the most recent sale. So I didn't think that that was a good comparison, but I did look at the last two sales. This book right here in uh, January of 2022, again, that is the most recent that we have. 
when you compare that one to the most recent sale in March, you're looking at uh, $1,300. This one went for $1,300 versus $995. That is only a decline of $305, which is, is not terrible. That is not terrible at all. Let's go ahead and look at how a blue label, universal label is performing. And we're going to look at the exact same corresponding grade of 5.0. Again, not that these are comparisons, but we have to start somewhere. 657 of those on the CGC census. So this book has more data, as you would imagine, because it is a blue label. A year ago, this book was going for, on average, $2,044. The 30-day uh, the average, $1,641. That is a decline of $403. To some degree or another, that is that is similar to what we saw with, with the 5.0, but I think the time delta was greater for the, the green label. How did the last two sales look? The previous sale, 1577 was what it was in uh, late March. And by the end of the March, by the end of March, the book had uh, had gone up. No, yeah, it had gone up uh, to 1625. So we actually have an increase of $48 or so, 50 bucks between those two. Again, that is potentially a good sign, right? That there is still a lot of demand and interest for this book. Let's go ahead and look at another example here. Again, we're looking at a Fantastic Four a 48. We're going to look at a 4.5. There are 701 of those on the census. Let's go ahead and look and see how this one is performing. The one-year average for this book, 1649. The, uh, the most recent sale was this book right here. Uh, we can use either number. We can, let's use uh, let's use the 1350 because that was the most recent. So I decided to go with that for some strange reason uh, on my notes here. 1350 was what this book actually went for. That is a delta of $300 for for the one year or a one year decline of, of basically $299, $300 between those two. The, the last two sales, what happened there? It actually went up. It went up $80. Uh, if you if you look at the $1,270 versus where it is at $1,350, you have an increase of $80, which again is a good sign that maybe this book has hit its bottom and is starting to, to bounce back up. Again, a, a good sign versus maybe the green label. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at our last example here, and that one is going to be a green label 4.5. Uh, there was a, a recent sale of this one. Well, no, not a recent sale. The, the, this one's a little dated, uh, but you can see here that the most recent sale that was in the end of 2022 was $790. The sale before that was 1058 That is basically a decline of $268 between those two. So, um, you know, I, I think one of the things that folks probably recognize about this is that if you take a step back from this, green labels were a great way to go for some folks because they represented an opportunity to get in the game but not to spend as much money to get a blue label. There was some, some value savings there, if you will. But as we've seen in some of these examples, the, the green labels seem to be getting hit a little bit harder. So all books are hit, right? But it seems like the green labels are getting hit a little bit harder than the, the blue labels. So, you know, one, one other thing to kind of keep in mind is that we looked at two books that are extremely popular extremely popular books and characters and that we are looking at the first appearance of Wolverine, the first appearance of Silver Surfer, cameo of Galactus. These are incredibly popular books. If you look at some less popular books and or characters, the question you have to ask yourself is would these numbers look better or worse? Because if you think about it, popular books equal demand. Demand equals interest. E interest equals people spending money on those books. If you have a character or a book that is not as popular as these books and these characters, potentially the numbers could look a little worse. And so just something to kind of keep in mind, and I also wanted to kind of explain why I picked these two books. These were two of the most popular books based upon a video that I did just recently based upon searches conducted on an app out there. So I wanted to provide that context for folks. At the end of the day, it is your money. It is your collection. You decide how you want to spend it. But my hope is that I've said something in this video that might actually help you in some way, shape, or form. 
As always, if you enjoyed this video, I want to encourage you to go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. If you want to leave me a comment, feel free to do that because I read all the comments. And if you want to reach out to me directly, you can do that on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. This thing on. Mic check. I just want to make sure y'all can hear me clearly. Yo. Should you practice art? Or should art be your practice? I had a question, so I asked it. Not to anyone specifically, but to my inner God, you know? The one that's gonna be a master. The one that's more than a rapper. The one that's an educator. The one that seeks enlightenment. He travels with concepts. He's got the mindset expansive. He overstands that his time combined with travel and concepts makes his mind convex. Sort of like when you look at a brain scan. Straight off meditation, we was concaving until we had that eternal dialogue that created our dialect. Now we're in distinct rooms of pure souls, having them conversations, synergy and combinations. You fly and we waiting, Indian style in the gold.